and off we go. And Purdue and the Road Blacks, first true road game for the Boilers this year. 8-0, coming off the win Friday at home at Mackey Arena against Iowa, 77-70. Well, a 20-point lead in that game. It got all the way down to two, but they were able to get the victory, and they go into the big foul, but Edie only hits the backboard. And Purdue loves to establish Zach Edie early in games and give Cliff Amore credit there. He held his ground and kept Zach Edie out of that paint. And there's Amore on the other side. Got a good look, but couldn't knock it down. He's going to be key tonight, Cliff Amore. Well, he's fighting a tough battle because in order to guard the elite bigs in the Big Ten Conference, you've got to be physical. You've got to be aggressive. So far, he's really walling up on, on Zach Edie and doing Doing a great job defensively without fouling. So Edie, the first two shots, neither of them hit the rim. It's a guy that averages 15 and a half points a game. Second on the team behind Jaden Heidi Ivy for Purdue. Here he is again offensively, and a great start for Cliff Amore and Rutgers. You can see just how long Cliff Amore is. That he gets rip screened from the opposite elbow right to the block. Purdue a little bit lackadaisical with the help, and Amore with a nice finish. Rutgers coming in four and four. They've had their struggles to start the year. They've lost four of their last five after beginning three and zero. Oh. And Purdue clearly, Robbie wants to go inside with a basketball. Well, smart by Purdue because you understand that behind Cliff Amore, there's just not the bodies with Travion Williams and Zach. This is the third time ever that Rutgers has hosted the number one team in the country. They're 0-2. They face North Carolina here at 07. UConn here is the number one team in 04, but they lost both of those. Deep three, Harper ring it up. Ron Harper, when he's on, Robbie, he's dangerous. Coming off maybe his worst game of the season in Illinois, just one of nine. He's going to be really, if Rutgers is going to do this tonight, it's got to be Ron Harper Jr. He's a big-time player, a preseason All-Big Ten selection. More than capable. That's a, a good sign for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. He's a leading scorer and rebounder for Rutgers. And there's the answer from the talented sophomore, Jaden Ivey. Oh, those count. I mean, that's just a heck of a take right to his right hand. Not that he can't go left, but when Jaden Ivey goes right, he's scoring that thing. Well, he changed it to Jersey Mike's. <laughs> Formerly, that would have been a really nice job, Brandon. <laughs> Inside, leader and getting his first start, the sophomore Mawat Mag with a bucket. Oh, I love the cut. Sasha Stefanovic is going to overplay a cut right back to the basket. Mawat Mag making a smart play. And without Geo Baker, the lineup's been shuffled the last few games for Steve Peichel, and Jaden Ivey is feeling it early. He now has five. That's the, the aspect of his game that's taking him to the next level. Shooting over 40% from three. We, we knew he was athletic, but now adding some serious skill to that athleticism. Okay, he going with a long sleeve underneath the jersey tonight. He's got the tights on too, Paul Mulcahy. You can't miss him for the Scarlet Knights. Well, shoot around, it was freezing in here. It so was. Maybe he was <laughs> counting on that. Here's Caleb McConnell on the baseline. Good pass out to Mawak Mag. In and out and back down. Four straight shots have dropped for the Scarlet Knights. Stefanovic, Purdue's sharpshooter. Well, they've got several of them, but he's one of them, and there's a foul away from the ball. Well, you kind of said it, Robbie, but so much different than their game Friday in Champaign when they lost 86-51 to to Illinois. Just were never on track. Off the bench, Travion Williams gets a touch and puts it up, but a little too much. Mag, catch and shoot. A little strong. And the rebound off the deflection to Stefanovic. Purdue giving it back to Stefanovic. She misses strong. And now Rutgers. Mulcahy's going to take it on the spin. Offensive foul. And so we can see. Geo Baker back with this group. He, he's such a, a huge part of what they do. He's a guy that can create. And it sounded like they were going to have him back from his hamstring, but it ended up being the flu that, that took him out tonight. Yeah, he practiced on Tuesday. Travion Williams gets it to drop for his first bucket of the night. Ooh, another tough shot. Give Cliff Amore credit. Every shot that's come out of the post has been contested and physical. And that's just really good offense by Travion Williams. Williams 
playing in his 102nd game as a Boilermaker, most on the team. McConnell had a charge free by Ivy. Officials, by the way, DJ Carstensen, Courtney Green, and Don Daly. Harper trying to back down Gillis. A little bit of a size advantage, but Gillis holding his ground. Freshman Jalen Miller, number two for Rutgers. Keep an eye on him. They say he's given him a spark the last couple of games off the bench. I, I like the way he came in in Champaign. At least he showed a pulse in a game where they didn't play well. Talking about a pulse, though, but Juan Mag, he's come out here looking for a shot, made a couple against Illinois late. You can see right now he's playing with a lot of confidence on the offensive end of the floor. Robbie, we talked about how good Purdue shoots at Rutgers near the bottom of the league, but right now they're five of seven. This has been their Achilles heel almost all year. It's been their inability to make shots, but tonight off to a hot start. Helping Rutgers get this three-point lead. Amori is going to try to show the range. Well, they gave him that shot. He missed it. Here comes Eric Hunter. Purdue so far four of nine from the floor. Travion Williams taking it to Amori, and he got another one. That was an impressive move by Williams. I mean, the ability to put it on the floor, but then how big are Travion Williams' hands? I mean, he palmed that basketball. That was really impressive by the big fella. So coming off the bench for Edie, those two big guys do not play together. They haven't been on the court together all year, but a couple of buckets for Williams off the bench. McConnell had that disrupted and knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to Purdue. He has been a Rutgers killer. He's averaged 16 and 11 in four games and shot 61% from the field against the Scarlet Knights. With all these numbers, keep in mind, he's never really played over 20 minutes a game in his career as that one goes in and out. A struggle for Rutgers to contain Kofi Coburn and the Illini attack. But here, he's been physical and has defended without fouling. Just look at the numbers. 20 assists, 21 turnovers on the year. He'll make some passes, though, that, that make you just say, wow. Eric Hunter, one of the seniors on this Purdue team with the left hand missed it. There's Williams. Great offensive rebound, and he has six here early. Travion Williams picking up right where he left off against Iowa. Had 18 boards. Now, 17 of them were on the defensive end, but... He is such a good offensive rebounder, just lingering in that area, pursuing the basketball and getting a bucket. Purdue's first lead of the night here. And coming into this game, Purdue had hardly trailed this year. In fact, Purdue only 27 minutes out of 320 coming in this season had they been behind. Off the mark by Hunter, another offensive rebound for Williams. He's just got such a size mismatch down there. You can clip Amori on the floor. Saw those numbers. Williams, eight straight points, four of five for the floor. Rest of the team, three of ten. Purdue also has the last six rebounds in this game as well, so that's troublesome for Rutgers. This Rutgers lineup on the floor, I just think you have to run offense through Ron Harper Jr., but I guess if Oscar Palmquist is going to knock down some threes, you can tell Purdue content to let him shoot it. They are not guarding him at the three-point line. Palmquist making you pay on that possession. Well, Robbie coming into the night, he'd only scored five points on the season. Now he's put up two threes and made one of them. Travion Williams, my goodness, is he in his own. You can tell Gonzalez AG trying to shade that left shoulder. Travion Williams going to the right shoulder, using the right hand, and with the long arms and the shorter Gonzalez AG goes right over the top. Yeah, make it now 10 straight for the senior from Chicago. Up top open three, Jaden Jones too much, and who else but Williams to get the rebound? He was fortunate there, miscommunication. Two guys go with one, and Jaden Jones wide open. Off the mark there for Brandon Newman. One of several guys shooting about 40% from deep for Purdue. And then he gets the steal on the other end to make up for the miss. That's a bad pass from Ron Harper Jr. An overhead bounce pass that long. Of, you just can't do that. Not if you want to beat a team like Purdue. Williams. And why not? Two more. He's got a dozen straight for the Boilers. Well, Travion Williams is going to the total package right now of post moves. He's showing off a little bit of everything. That's the luxury that Matt Painter has. He's got another guy that could be an All-American right back behind him. 
A set play for Thompson, and Thompson, a rare air ball. That's a guy who is shooting so well from deep, 14 of 23 coming into tonight from three-point range. There's been some ugly misses for Purdue from yep. the three-point line. And outside of Travion Williams, it's been a little bit of a struggle scoring. Amore took it right at Edie but missed it. And as you said, Ryan, this is a Purdue team that shoots 44% from three. They can also do that with Jaden Ivey. I mean, how explosive is Jaden Ivey? Just blowing by Oscar Palmquist. And that was elite right there in transition. And see why he's shooting 63% in transition. Really impressive. Nice wraparound pass from Paul Mulcahy. That's what they need. They need Paul Mulcahy to run the show. He sets Cliff Amore up right there with a beautiful pocket pass. But so far, after a slow start, Purdue has been able to silence this sellout crowd here at Piscataway. 15th straight sellout for Rutgers, and they've already sold out every game the rest of the season. Sasha Stefanovic doing what he does best. He's running off those screens on the baseline. Paul Mulcahy getting caught up, and this is what makes Purdue so tough. They have so many guys who can make you pay from deep. Stefanovic coming off, had plenty of time, and knocking it down. See the numbers there at the bottom, 46% from three, and now another Rutgers turnover, but Ivy lost the ball, and he gets called for the double dribble. Turnovers were a little bit of an issue. 17 of them for Purdue in the win over Iowa. They really struggled with that diamond in one press. And that ended up being the middle guy in their press breaker just refused to come to the ball. But now it's different here tonight. Plus four after Rutgers commits their fifth turnover of the evening already. Ivy up top, Stefanovic utilizing the shot fake. And it won't drop for him. Knocked out of bounds, it belongs to the Scarlet Knights. I think this, this Purdue team has a great chance to break that record. They are, the depth and the size is what separates this to, to what I think is the best Purdue team Matt Painter has had. Top of the arc, and that one drops. Second shot of the night to go for Ron Harper, Jr. As much as Rutgers has struggled shooting it from three, they are now four of seven. And Ron Harper Jr., he's got to be that guy. He's got to look for his shot. He's got to be aggressive. They, they've got to play through him at times tonight. Rutgers, four of seven from deep. Again, they come into the game less than 28% from behind the three-point arc. I said foul against Purdue. It was against Rutgers and Mawat Mag. Five team fouls on the Scarlet Knights. Ivy got up in the air. Extra pass up top. Everything but the three-pointer to drop for Gillis. Harper Jr. getting it over. Mag driving and contacted a foul. Made a couple perimeter shots now. Jaden Ivey had to close out to him and respect that. You drive that close out, get yourself to the foul line. Milan Mag has given this group a nice lift on the offensive end of the floor. In his first career start, by the way, those were the first free throws of the game for either side. Here's Williams back in off the bench. Going to work. There's that shoulder fake. That's his first miss in seven tries. He got right to where he wanted. And again, Cliff Amore doing a pretty good job of contesting shots and making Travion Williams score over the top of his leg. Okay, he in a little bit of trouble. Both teams shooting it pretty well. Rutgers over 50%, Purdue 46%. Inside, Harper with great position. I love the fact that Ron Harper recognized I've got a mismatch. Big time pass from Cliff Amore, but Ron Harper doing his work early, pushing Sasha Stefanovic right up that lane, and now all of a sudden, the crowd is right back in this one. Rebound coming down to Mawad Mag. A bucket here and it'll really get loud. McConnell trying to make it happen. A 9-0 run right now for Rutgers over the last two plus minutes.
Stefanovic contested. No. Rebound tapped out to Amori. Paul Mulcahy. Feel like a bucket here. Matt Painter might be taking a timeout. Okay, he comes to get it. A 9-0 run that Rutgers is on to get the lead back at 26-24. Harper, deep three. Got it. Timeout, Purdue. Calm his troops down. Do you turn to Travion Williams on this possession? I think you have to. I mean, this is where your experience pays off. Now, with that being said, a lot of guys in this Purdue team who have not played in front of a road crowd ever or in two years. So all of a sudden, you're in hostile territory. I would go right back to Trevion Williams. And Williams steps out to shoot the three, misses it. Ivy as well, and Ivy has it knocked out by McConnell. Yeah, Illinois blitzed him, 86-51. Certainly a different story here in front of the home crowd. Purdue hasn't scored in over four and a half minutes. Williams. Boy, look at how physical Rutgers is with these cutters. They ran. They're, they're just, the Purdue is totally out of sorts. Right through Newman's hands. Mawak Mag, no. And a rebound comes down to Mason Gillis. And then Gillis has it stripped. And McConnell is fouled. He got them off to a terrific start offensively. It's been effective cutting, shooting the basketball. Mawak Mag has had a great night so far here. McConnell almost got his own miss, but that went off his fingertips. They have been the aggressors here tonight. They've taken it right to Purdue. Purdue in the last five minutes, no points. 0 of 6 from the floor and three turnovers. They get four turnovers as Ivy tosses it through the hands of Williams. I, I think you have to respect what an environment at Jersey Mike's Arena is really like. The crowd is always into it. It's a sellout. Full house gets as loud as just about anywhere. It only seats a little over 8,000, but folks, there's nowhere for the noise to go. And it just clangs off the metal bleachers and the upper echelons here at the stadium. Shot clock at five, and they're going to get an offensive foul, and that's the second on Cliff Amore, so that could be important. It's been a struggle. And remember, Purdue had a 15-2 run to go up seven, and Rutgers has answered with a 12-0 run of their own. Well, they should go right to this man right here. Dean Reber checks in the game. Travion Williams has got to go right to the rack and score the ball. Pretty good defense. He missed it. Hunter grabs the offensive board. Ivy from five feet Whoa. behind the arc. Ooh. Rare to see them go this far in the game without getting to the free throw line. Yeah, their plus 77 free throw discrepancy is the largest discrepancy in all of college basketball coming in. So far tonight, as you see on your screen, both teams two of two at the line. Harper from the top of the arc, he hit again, and he got fouled. They need performances like this from Harper. You can sense a little bit of desperation in Rutgers' play. This is a huge stretch of schedule for them. You go to Illinois, it doesn't go well. You got the number one team in the country on your floor. You've got Seton Hall later this week. Really a huge part of their schedule here right now. Got their largest lead at the moment of seven. Ivy contacts and a foul. And now her son, a part of Purdue's first number one team 20 years later. Ironically, that Notre Dame team would win the national title and beat the women's Purdue team. Harper again. That one's short. Tap back. Mag almost got it to drop, and finally Williams clears it. Rutgers got two high-quality looks right there. Well, it was Ron Harper and that tip. They're operating at a much higher level in terms of offensive execution. The crowd wanted to travel on Williams before that shot. Battle for the board, knocked out. It'll stay with Purdue. Purdue, 0 for its last 10. Edie 
of the game. Can he end that drought? Yes, he does right there with a hook shot. They clear out that side, and Zach Eady just going right at Dean Reber. I think Purdue needs to play through the post more. Uh, with the size mismatch they have, Cliff Amore in foul trouble. Got to go to the rack. Caleb McConnell underneath. Ivy comes to help. Baseline collision. It's out of two to play in the first half. Watermakers got up early, and Rutgers has since seized control. Back inside of the big fella. That's 7 4, 295. Look at that advantage. There you go, Robbie. That's the matchup. I mean, once again, you clear out the entire side for Zach Eady, and when he's rolling downhill like that, he buried Dean Reber. And after that long drought, Purdue has now scored on their last four trips down the floor. Harper, 15 points to lead all scores. This time to the corner. Jalen Miller, the freshman, underneath. And a foul. Just a little thin without him. It was certainly a, a huge loss for Rutgers. And Purdue right now with a chance to tie or regain the lead. Taken away by McConnell, another steal, but he stepped on the sideline. Probably one of the most underrated defenders in no, the conference. I mean, he will just flat out take your ball. And he is, I don't think he gets near the credit he deserves for what kind of defender he is in this league. Down inside to Edie once more. He toes the line in those size 20 shoes, and he knocks down the second. I asked him today at Shooter, I said, where do you get shoes that big? He said, you don't. He said, luckily, <laughs> Purdue gets them, but I can't go out and buy shoes as big anywhere. Harper contacts, and Ivy is going to get called for the foul. He struggles down the stretch, but a great first half here tonight. Miller. Jalen Miller's got some words for him, too. He's not backing down whatsoever. Yeah, he's telling him to bring it on. Pretty bold for a young freshman. Inside to Edie. Edie. And a blocking foul. Now nine first half points for Zach Edie. Travion Williams comes in here and replaces him. Five seconds, Paul Mulcahy. And he lost it. Hunter, half court heave. No. We, we watched Steve Peichel throw just about everybody at Purdue's Bigs once Cliff Amore got in foul trouble. I think they'd go right at him and try to establish that post. There is Cliff Amore on a great he can be coming off the screen. The help comes over, and he sets up Cliff Amore for the monster slam. Last five games, including tonight, 29 assists, just six turnovers for Mulcahy. Here is Edie, and he lost it, and Mulcahy takes it away. That was great defense by Cliff Amore. He has been so physical with for the most part, without fouling. He got the offensive foul, set the moving screen, but he's been tremendous on defense tonight. Double team comes on Harper, and he throws it away, and then Jaden Ivey gets bumped by McConnell. Purdue as a team only has five assists. Back inside to Edie. Creates space and gets it to go. Steve Peichel asking for an offensive foul. You can see just how physical Zach Eady is. It's with his elbows, and I think that's why it doesn't get called. He certainly creates space. It's a tough guard for anybody in this league. Well, as expected, Purdue has dominated in the paint, 24 to 10. 
But now Rutgers looking for some paint points. Amori off the mark, and it belongs to Purdue. Ethan Morton, kid who rarely shoots. He passes it inside to Edie. Ivy. Here comes the double. Taken away by Mag. Risky playing with those three fouls, and he drops it off. But Mulcahy okay, missed it. Well, they got a great look. You're, you're right. By Mawat Mag, that was so risky. But he saw Zach Eady turn his back to him and went and just took his ball. Now Ivy for three. No. And Robbie Purdue just two of 12 for deep. Well, they've had good looks or tough contested ones. It doesn't matter. They have not been able to get anything Whoa! going. Recruits in Rutgers history, elite athleticism, and it was on display there. Stefanovic, yes. And that subdues the crowd momentarily. Purdue back within one. Trying to get it back inside. Amori again. That was too easy. Just a miscommunication. And it's again the rip screen. And it's from the opposite elbow. Jaden Ivey doesn't open up at all. And because of that, Cliff Amori waltzes in for an uncontested layup. He now has 10. Top 50 recruit last year. Highest rank that Rutgers has had since 2007 when they recruited Mike Rosario, McDonald's All-American. Savanovich misses. Edie cleaning up the trash. Boy, Zach Eady is just too big out there. And that's a high-low action that's designed to get Sasha Stefanovic a shot or you throw it inside. But if that shot goes up, you've got great rebounding position. Zach Eady getting it done. And Mulcahy with an air ball. He's really worked on his body. He has come a long way in, in that regard. Out of bounds, and they'll say it belongs to Purdue as Thompson was able to block out Mulcahy. Talk so much about Purdue going inside, but Purdue now 2 of 13 from deep. Are they going to need to hit some threes, or can they just keep pounding it inside? I think if you play inside, it will open up the outside game. You, you play through your big fellas. Now, if you turn it over, it doesn't matter, but I think you've got to keep throwing it inside, whether it's Travion Williams or Zach Eady. Seventh Purdue turnover. And Illinois Friday, it's stuck a lot of the time. So credit Rutgers, credit Steve Peichel for getting back to the drawing board, going back to work and practice, and making some serious adjustments. McConnell, his third steal of the night, and he turns it into two points. Again, Purdue is just so casual with the ball, and these Rutgers guards are hunting for steals. Caleb McConnell blows the play up and gets out in transition. Rutgers has never beaten the number one team in their program's history. They beat number two UCLA back in the early 80s. Trying to make history here tonight. But their defense doing the job as well. They forced Purdue into four turnovers this half. Stefanovic short on the three, long rebound. Newman. And finally, Purdue hits a three. They had missed their last eight from downtown. That's one of those where if you're going to shoot it, you probably better make it. But Brandon Newman made a huge three against Iowa last week, and that's a big one right there. Well, that's what Newman does. He's an outside shooter. Now Mulcahy bouncing it down inside to Mawat Mag. They've executed at a high level, and those assist numbers tell that story. Over 50% from the floor for the Scarlet Knights. Mulcahy missing there, though. And it's into the hands of Eric Hunter. Williams back to Hunter. Ivy. Newman hit one a moment ago. Doesn't get the bounce. Offensive board, Morton. Ivy down the lane. Boy, he got up in the air and got bailed out. He's lucky that he's so athletic because most guys, that's going to be a travel. And how about that? It all ends with an Ivy triple. The offensive glass, you take enough cracks at it, eventually Purdue is too good of a shooting team to stay cold forever. You get multiple looks right there. Jaden Ivey making you pay. And Purdue back in front. They came into the game second best in the country, 44% from deep, Purdue.
Harper has it stripped by Williams. Two on one. Morton. And he got fouled. Oh, Mulcahy lost it. And Hunter did not hit it. It was just off of Paul Mulcahy. I like the play by Matt Painter to have Eric Hunter, who is a great perimeter defender, just heat this basketball up. You make Paul Mulcahy a little bit uncomfortable playing point guard for the first time this season. And it's a little bit different when you're bringing it up, especially as you get into the second half. You can get incredibly fatigued. And again, Rutgers without their senior leader, Geo Baker, tonight. Off the mark by Newman, rebound to McConnell. In the corner, Mulcahy sets his feet and it's rejected. Gillis, who's had a pretty quiet night, but making a lot of noise right there. They try to get it into Mulcahy, and Williams takes it away. But you see that heel. Looks like it comes down running the sideline. McConnell cannot get the bounce. Well, he's been good on defense, and he has all year, but boy, he struggled to shoot it this season. Oh, what a burst. And there is that burst, and now McConnell's going to pick up the foul. So Purdue will stay out east. They will go to Brooklyn tomorrow, have the off day, and then get ready for a battle on Sunday. 8-0 run for the Boilers. Back up five here. with a lineup out here right now. No Geo Baker in this game, no Ron Harper Jr. right now, no Cliff Amore. It's just where is the scoring going to come from? Probably Caleb McConnell. Paul Mulcahy okay. got to be a creator as well. McConnell dangerous pass taken away. Newman, Euro step. He had it stripped. Travion Williams to Ivy. Oh, this is Helter Skelter right here. <laughs> it all ends with Hunter missing a three. But Williams with the offensive rebound on the reload. Hunter again. Got it. 11-0 run for Purdue. Timeout Rutgers. We said it earlier, but Williams and Edie by the numbers, two of the best offensive rebounders in the entire country. This is what makes them so tough. And Caleb first, another one that's in the top ten in the Big Ten in offensive rebounds, but Usually Purdue a very good shooting team on nights when they're not. They can just go after it, and their best offense tonight has been get on the glass and make plays. The well, Rutgers brought Harper back into the game after sitting for a few minutes. He gets the shot up there, but he misses it. They need him. I'm surprised he was over there that long with that run that Purdue just went on. 17 points for Harper, but none of them here in the second half as Purdue has their largest lead of the night. Williams. Going to work, fading away, and that did everything but drop. How many bigs in the country are going behind their back and just getting their game on like that? It's, <laughs> the answer is not many. But he's missed his last five. Remember, he had that stretch, Williams, in the first half where he had six straight buckets for Purdue. Here is Harper slinging it over to Jaden Jones. Jones leaning in, and he drew the contact. Ten points for Amori. Both free throws missed, but the offensive rebound. Boy, did Rutgers need that. Harper ends the drought. They had not scored in almost five minutes, and you just get a bounce your way. Trevion Williams doesn't block out. It goes right to Ron Harper Jr. and finally breaks that seal of scoring. But when that backhand is around Trevion Williams' back, that's what the official sees, and that's how he's going to call the foul. Morton almost has it stripped. Now back inside to Williams. Against Amore, puts it up and in. That's well defended, but again, it's just a big-time player getting to his signature move. He gets to his right-hand jump hook. It's pretty much over with for you. Travion Williams, another double-double, 16-10 and 10 for the man who was first-team all Big Ten last year. Amore, the two big men going against each other. He brings that lob threat. He can play pick and roll with him. Not necessarily a great score with his back to the basket, but 
you've got to account for him, whether it's in lob situations, dump downs, and on the offensive glass. Less than nine and a half remaining here. Purdue's first ever game as the number one ranked team in the country. Caleb McConnell is right there. With... And that's three on McConnell. Crowd still booing as Stefanovic gets it in the and then Harper takes it away. What a read by Ron Harper Jr. Just reading the passer's eyes. Paul Mulcahy setting the table. Seven assists tonight for number four in the Scarlet. He goes to work. Down the lane and gets Edie, and Edie rejects it with ease. Shot clock at 13. Into Harper. Had the big first half. Quiet here in the second with just two points. He likes the matchup with Morton, but too much. Rebound to Thompson. Ethan Morton brings that length and size where it's a different deal. We saw Sasha Stefanovic on him. We'd seen Jay Nivey on him. Jay Nivey and Purdue, they've gotten away with a couple here lately. The student section, they, they have some words. Ivy missing the three. There's Morton again to Stefanovic, and how big was that? Purdue's defense is locked in here. They've been much better in the second half. Rutgers led by one at intermission. Harper just Ethan one Morton for his guard. Yeah, he's really definitive, and Harper's just one of four this half. Now here's a Mori. He lost it going up, and Edie grabs it. I just think when, when you feed Cliff Amori the ball with his back to the basket, especially against Zach Edie, you are not playing to his strengths. Purdue with a chance to open this even further. Great kick to the corner. Thompson, no. And a rebound of McConnell. Great pass by Jaden Ivey. He set the table perfectly for Isaiah Thompson right there. McConnell draws the foul. He got Ivy in the air. They do have Caleb McConnell at the line out of the timeout. Rutgers led by seven in the first half, but right now they're down by eight. You can see Rutgers just blowing up Purdue's offense. They're not allowing catches. That ball is pushed out towards half court. Ivy directing traffic, trying to drive inside. Kick to the corner. Look at the ball work around to Stefanovic. Ooh, that was a thing of beauty, but he missed it. And finally, Rutgers is able to get a defensive rebound and a stop. And then they're going to get a foul on Stefanovic. Fifth Purdue team foul. Boy, Rutgers, one field goal in the last eight minutes. That's where they miss Geo Baker. And he is a guy that can make things happen. He's played well in his career against Purdue. It's just such a huge loss to not have him out here. And I think it's important to keep in mind that this is not Rutgers at full strength. You don't have one of your premier players. Rutgers 4-4 four and four on the season. They've lost four of their last five, but there is one of their premier players, Ron Harper. I love the play call. You clear the whole side out. It's an elevator screen going out the opposite direction. Ron Harper's at the elbow. He's got all the space he wants to work. A physical drive gets to his pull-up big time by Ron Harper Jr. Edie back to Morton. Edie battling, gets it back. Oh, is that going to be a foul on Mulcahy or on Edie? It looks like they're going to get Mulcahy. That's his fourth. And Amori's in some pain. Boy, he's reaching for the back of his neck. Steve Pico came out and let the official DJ Karstensen have a few words. He goes up here and he grabs his neck immediately. We're, we're shielded on that replay with what happened. You have to assume an elbow. So it, he comes right down on top of him. We've talked about it all night. 11 points, but he's really impacted the game on both ends of the floor. And they reviewed and say that it's clean. So it'll be a one and one for Zach Eady. 
I agree with what you said. I don't think there was anything dirty about the play with Amore. Now, you talk about Mulcahy, that might have been a different story. I'm not even sure they were reviewing that. And we're not on the floor, so we can't find out anyway. Yeah. Most arenas were positioned down on the court, but here we're a little high up and we don't have the access to the officials that we normally do. One and one, and Edie misses it. This crowd, you feel like a bucket. They're going to get into a frenzy. Mulcahy, and there's a whistle. And a foul on Edie on the other side. That was the sixth Purdue team foul, 86. So there will be free throws the rest of the way for both teams. Okay, he getting it into Harper. Ron Harper Jr. Leaning in, finger roll, scores it. That is just beautiful footwork from Ron Harper Jr. Again, Ethan Morton, who's done a pretty good job guarding him here in the second half. You gotta stay down on his shot fakes. He pivots around, gets the up and under, and scores the ball at the rim. There is life again in this crowd. Ivy, no. To Muat Mag. A 6 0 run. Look out here if they score. Defenders going down. Jay Ivey bringing the basketball. A terrific decision. Disadvantage basketball. You find the open shooter. That man is Eric Hunter, and he knocks down the three from the left wing. Hunter has hit two three-pointers tonight. He only had three on the season coming into the game, and there's an answer by Caleb McConnell. He looks like a different guy from the player that started this year 5 of 30. He came off that dribble handoff looking to score that rock. He now has eight. Back to a five-point deficit for Rutgers. Battle in the post. Travion Williams up in and a foul. Travion Williams now 19 points to go along with his 10 rebounds. The fact that, that he comes off the bench is unbelievable. <laughs> That's what Steve Peichel was saying. Like he, they pretty much have an All-American coming off the bench. And he only plays 18 minutes a game. He and Edie both under 20 a contest. Now the attention shifting back to the Scarlet Knights. Paul Mulcahy with five to shoot. Trying to duck it inside. And a foul, and that bucket is good for Gonzalez AG. Division II Junior College at San Jose State. Misses it, but Harper gets it back. Hopefully it just was one of those things where it scared him. They need him on the court. He has been a monster tonight. He ended up only sitting for two and a half minutes. Four-point game with four minutes to play. Williams against Amori. Gets into the paint. Reverse. No. Rebound to Harper. And that's where Cliff Amore is just so good. He's so long. He makes you score over the top. And I just don't think if Ralph Gonzalez AG is in the game, that's a bucket for Trevion Williams. Now Amore has it taken away. Ivy uncontested. Whoa. Well, that was gutsy in a four-point game with three and a half minutes. Boy, no kidding. I mean, how many windmills do you see in a game that's going down to the wire? But Jaden Ivey 
That's a dunk contest level dunk. Man, if he had missed that, Matt Painter may have blown a gasket, but he did not. And the lead is six. McConnell fading. No, but he's fouled. Our final media timeout. Breakaway dunk. I'm not just going to dunk it. I'm going to windmill it. <laughs> McConnell at the line for two, and he knocks it down. <laughs> Another look. <laughs> yeah, I thought. I mean, I thought he was obviously going to dunk it, but yeah, I just no, didn't I, expect I wasn't expecting that. him to lay it on. Yeah. You know, a high school kid would. But oh, that's, back, that's aggressive. Back to a four-point game. I like the play call here by Pike, a little run and jump. Purdue struggled against Iowa with a similar style of press, and this time, Jaden Ivey breaking it with a speed dribble. Purdue had 17 turnovers against Iowa, nine here so far tonight, almost 10, but Stefanovic gets it back. You better be ready with Caleb McConnell around. These hands are so active. Watch the shot clock here, Robbie. Morton has to pull it, and he airballs it. Shot clock by just three days ago, Purdue ranked number one in the nation for the first time ever. And now that number one ranking in jeopardy here late. McConnell fading away. High arcing play from Caleb McConnell. Inside of two minutes, takes it to the rim. And he doesn't get it to go, but he does draw the contact. Get into his right hand. That was a really nice take. <laughs> Stefanovic misses the second, but how about Williams? Oh, just refusing to be blocked out. That was some incredible effort right there by Trevion Williams. That could turn out to be the rebound of the game. Hunter. Shot clock at two, Williams, short. And Rutgers gets it back inside of 90 seconds. McConnell, 12 points, 10 of them in the second half, but he gives it up to Harper. This has to be Ron Harper Jr. time. It is time for your best player to go and make a big play. He's got a season high 25. What a pass! Oh. What a save! It. Caleb McConnell is just wrecking plays right now. They get it down to Travion. Two defenders there. Williams spinning. He traveled. Rutgers converging. It's an ISO for Trevion Williams. And look at the help defense come. There's the displacement. They get Trevion for the offensive foul. It's one of those plays, though, where there's three and four Rutgers defenders there. Matt Painter doesn't like the call, but honestly, I thought it was three seconds. It would have been a yeah. turnover regardless. Third foul on Williams. Rutgers hasn't led since it was 44-41. Harper. Oh, he thought McConnell was cutting on the baseline, and he threw it away. Well, had he been cutting, he would have had a layup. I mean, it looked like Caleb McConnell faked him out, started to cut, stayed in that corner, almost a spitting image for the cut that Mawat Mag just made. 15th turnover of the game and the most costly for the Scarlet Knights. Look at how unaware Jaden Ivey is. He has no idea where Caleb McConnell is. He's so up his line. It would have been there, but McConnell doesn't cut, and that ball sails out of bounds. Keep in mind with the timeouts, two for Purdue, one for Rutgers. Both teams in the double bonus here. The arrow is with Purdue, should there be a tie-up. And Matt Painter is going to go ahead and take one of those remaining two timeouts. Getting it in, shot clock off, but Ivy is trapped. Yes, they called it. It's a travel. McConnell into Harper. 
Guarded by Morton. Drives it on him. Pivots. Fades. Got it! Big shot, Ron Harper Jr. Rutgers back in front for the first time since it was 44-41. And Matt Painter takes the timeout. Everybody in the building on their feet. Hunter to Stefanovic. Here he is, Will.